So I'm here with Abaro, better known as Ghost Poet. We're in the Concord 2 where you're playing a sold out show tonight. How do you feel on the moment that you walk out onto stage and there's all the lights and all the sound of the people? It's like a nothingness really, if I'm honest. A kind of, um, it's a place, it's, it's a moment in time when I can just let my mind go blank and then focus on one task only, which is not something that I um, have the luxury of being able to do um, most of the time. So yeah, it's just a nothingness and then a focus on the task in hand really. How would you describe your live show for someone who's never seen it before? It's getting there slowly but surely. It's just kind of a reflection of me, um, a reflection of my passion for music and it's something that I've just been working on for a long time and I'm getting to a point now where it's all coming together, I would say. Do you feel like Dark Days and Canapes is a culminating achievement or are you still on the road to where you want to go? I'm closer, but I don't know if I want to be too close. I want to keep pushing myself and developing my craft. Yeah, I feel, I feel, I feel in a good place musically. So um, yeah, I'm pleased with how it's going. It's quite a bleak record. Uh, is it a hopeless record? Is it a hopeless record? Um, it's this music, isn't it? It's kind of a reflection of the times and a reflection of my mind state and um, the general feeling in the air. And I just wanted to capture all that in the lyrics and music. And there's hope in there. You've got to dig deep for it. But it's um, a reflection of many things. It's a yeah, it's a it's a it's a co acc accumulation of uh, many things. So this sense of unease that you were trying to distill, mm. what kind of things were you drawing on when you were thinking about that? Conversations with um, friends and family, um, convers overheard conversations, stuff in the news, stuff I read, stuff that you can't really put a finger on. That you just in a particular space, and it's doesn't feel quite like it used to be it through age or experiences and it's all those things are just stored in my mind and when it's time to make a record I try and tap into all that the last time we spoke you probably don't remember but we talked on the phone for yeah. juice okay uh, and we talked about the two videos that you've made with Zhang and Knight and yeah. they both obviously draw on consumerism quite mm, a lot no, where did not both of them no Okay. Visually, no. I do just want to grab onto the theme of consumerism, though. Okay. Where do you think, if we keep going the way we're going now, where do you think that'll take us in 50 years? I don't know. We'll see in 50 years. <laughs> it's, um, I don't know. It's just interesting because the world is changing so much. And I remember a time before a lot of things that are going on now, before social media, before consumerism in its current form, um, and it's kind of, I'm getting to an age where I, I'm reflecting on my past and I'm interested and anxious to know what the future holds. And that's where it comes from for me. Consumerism is consumerism. People, if it's not goods of some sort, it'll be another kind of vice of some sort to keep, um, or to, 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 to um, find this happiness or you know find a bit of happiness so i don't know i i assume it will just be you know something along the lines of some kind of chip of some sort under your fingernails or something so you can you know press this finger so you can get your favorite whatever <laughs> easier consumption i guess so the latest video you've released is for woe is me it just came out yeah, a couple yeah. of days ago uh -huh. i want to talk about Firstly, what it's about, because it's a really interesting video, and also why you felt that you had to make this video. It's a label thing, isn't it, videos? I don't... I, I'm involved in videos in the sense of chatting to the directors and putting across my thoughts in terms of what the song's about and where I see the direction of a video, but videos are something that labels like to do, I guess. Um, I, like to, I like to visualize music, but... For me, it's the most important thing is the music, and that's my main focus. Um, so that's, I guess, why it was made. 
Um, but in terms of what the video is about, you best to speak to the director, Savannah. I kind of like, I got sent a lot of treatments and it was a treatment that stuck out. It was along the lines of looking at an older gentleman who was battling with um, his sexuality to a certain extent. And that was the kind of idea that we went with. And it's connected to the song, but not connected to the song. And I kind of liked it because um, I like people to make their own interpretations of what the songs are about. And that was her interpretation. And it just stuck out to me as something interesting and topical. And um, that's why we decided to go with that one. Do you think that videos can become like an art form in their own right? Of course. Yeah. And it's something that I want to, I would love to get involved with a bit more down the line in terms of either directing my own videos or doing some kind of um, visual you know, short film or something like that. But just like making a record, it's, um, it takes a lot of work, you know, and I haven't got the time or, yeah, the time to really focus on something like that. But I would like to, it's a great thing, visuals, film, and it's just, it's amazing. It's such an amazing art form. How was working with Daddy G for that song? Yeah, great. Yeah, he's a really nice guy and... Um, we've kind of had a relationship since me working with Massive Attack on um, the single Come Near Me. And um, yeah, we just kind of kept in contact. And when it was time for me to work on this record, I kind of felt like this song could be really great with him on it. And, you know, he was very happy to oblige. And yeah, I think he just brings an energy to the, to the track that um, was necessary, really. So it was good to have him on it. He's, yeah, a really cool guy. And your other collaborator was Ira for this album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why, why did you choose to work with her? Just love her music. That's it. That's how I always start. It always starts from there. Mm -hmm. If I love someone's music, then if, if, if I feel like I've written something that could work with that particular voice or musicianship, then I want to work with them. And that was the case of Ira, really. And... Uh, She's such a talent, such an amazing talent. And I, I heard her really early doors. And it's great to, you know, to see her journey and see her, her debut record out. And it's, that's amazing as well. So, yeah, it's good. How long did it take you to make this album? How long have the songs been with you? Um, I don't really store up lyrics. I kind of write lyrics close to whenever I feel like making a record, be it a couple of years or not really much more than that. And... I write snippets of lines and stuff all the time, but I don't really, I, try, I kind of write for a record rather than stockpiling um, songs, you know. So um, um, total, it took about two, three, three months in total to make it, but I, that was spread, that was spread over a period of time rather than three months in a row. So it was like, it took around a year to get it done, but in terms of man hours or women hours or hours in general, it was um, around three, three months, I would say, yeah. And how does the process work from you write lyrics and then do you take it to session musicians or to, or to people that you like to collaborate with and run ideas through? I write the demos at home, so that's the lyrics and the music. And then I, in this case, I worked with Leo Abrahams. He was the producer of the record and he brought in musicians based on particular songs who we felt would work really well and then in terms of guest vocals and stuff there's also um who we got in there charlotte Hafferley, who used to be in ash she's does some backing vocals on a couple of songs um, um the lead singer of skinny girl diet is on freak show background and um charlie charlie steen from shame is on another song immigrant boogie and it was just voices that I felt would work with those songs. And I just kind of approached them either personally or via management and said, you know, I've got this song, this particular song, would he, would he be up for, you know, singing these lyrics that I've written? And all of them seemed to be up for it, really. So that's how that happened. What do you think the tone's going to be like for the next album? I don't know if I will make another record. <laughs> I don't know. I can't even think beyond today. So I couldn't answer that. No collaborators in your sights? 
because I don't know if I'm going to make another record. It's very hard to answer that question too. We'll see, we'll see. I don't know. I just kind of, I want to, I want to promote this record and I've got other projects I'm trying to work on now. So I would like to make another record for sure. Um, but I, I'm, an, I'm in no rush to do it anytime soon. All right. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.